Yeah, I have a really big accident on uh, Pflanzgarten. I come over the, the, the big chunk from Pflanzgarten. The car, the air goes under the car and the other car goes up in the air and I make a lot of spuns. But I don't know exactly how, how much is it. And uh, so I, the car comes to stop after three or 400 meters from there. What do you think caused the accident? Yeah, I think the, the air comes under the car. It's, it's a jump. The, you come on in the fifth gear over the jump, the car lifts a bit, and then when, when the air comes under the car, the other the car goes up. And uh, But I don't know exactly what uh, in this moment was the point. No. You did a 6 minutes 22 seconds on the lap previous, prior to the accident. Do you think you were trying too hard, you were going too quickly, considering you had a 30 second lead? No. I. I draw always the same line on this position, uh, on this place. The uh, in my first part the same, always the same line, and uh, said I don't know why it's with this accident now. The exciting qualifying at Mexico was made all the more so as the team struggled to get to grips with the 6,500 foot atmosphere and all the bumps of the circuit plus turn 14. This is the big one, innocuously named, but it claimed a number of victims, especially during qualifying. Not a few people had their start line, forming up in ranks of two and building up speed as they come down towards the start. But the green light doesn't go on, the front row slows down and disaster at the back. The domino effect of breaking through the field and there's a coming together at the back between the RLR Porsche of Manuel Reuter and Harold Gross in the Overmeyer Porsche. The red flags are out almost at once and there's Harold Gross's car. You can see the damage he's done to that. The field still going round, still racing, but there must be red flags because there are cars across the start line. And in fact, slowing up now as the flags begin to wave, this indicates a restart. And the cars slow up coming back towards the start line. It's the RLR car, of course, of Manuel Reuter, which is left on the start line. Here you can see it again. The front row slows down. Gross taps the RLR car in the back, sends it skimming across the track into the Armco, and it comes to rest there, right in the entrance to the pit lane. And that's one of the Tim Lee Davy cars also involved in that little fracas, limping back towards the pits. And no, no, Manuel Reuter confirms the way it happened, and as you can see, is somewhat indignant. Manuel Reuter could see the front row slowing down, he slowed down and he thought the cars behind should have seen what was happening and slowed down as well. He had nowhere to go, nothing to do except be punted up the boot and Manuel Reuter now feeling himself a victim of circumstances certainly doesn't think that it's his fault. He shouldn't have been watching his mirror, he was concentrating on the start 500 metres ahead of him as was every other driver on the track of course. And his final words confirm that his weekend is over, out of his kaput. That means it's finished, and there you can see the results of that little coming together, the number 14 car being winched up onto the trailer.